this video, I'm going to explain you the very basics of USMLE that will include the structure and cups. So watch the video till the very end to decide if USMLE is for you or not. Hi there, my name is Asti and welcome to my channel where I post videos documenting my life journey and medical lessons. So before we begin this video, let me just familiarize you with some of the very common terminology. So in order to be a doctor in USA, uh, your journey would look something like this. High school, bachelor's, pre-med, MD, residency and fellowship. But the same journey in Nepal, Bangladesh, China, UK and many other countries would look something like this. High school, that's also called plus two. And then uh, NBBS, that is bachelor's in medicine and bachelor's in uh, surgery. And then MD and then fellowship, right? So that means the MD in America is equivalent to the uh, MBBS in Nepal and the residency in America is equivalent to the MD in Nepal. So USMLE stands for United States Medical Licensing Examination. So in order to be a working doctor or be a part of any of its undergrad or um, residency program, you must take this exam. USMLE step one is going to be the most talked about exam in your whole medical journey. So why is that? Well, that's because uh, America provides one of the best medical training in the whole world and the doctors working there have a better working and living standard. Plus, they also have a very high financial compensation, right? So yeah, that's it. Now, let me just walk you through the uh, structure of the USMLE exam. So USMLE is divided into four parts. Step 1, Step 2 CK, Step 2 CS and Step 3. Do the name step one and two uh, might might make you think like it's it's taken in a particular order, but it's not compulsory to take the exam in that particular order. Uh, so many people prefer taking step two before one, but still the majority of people go for step one, two, uh, two K, two uh, two S, and then they go for the step three, right? So step three is always in the last. In America, people take their step one examinations after their second year, but in many countries, people also like to take the exams after they graduate from their uh, medicals. In step one examination, you are asked stuff about the basic science, right? So the subjects that you'll be tested are over here. Uh, so this exam is about eight hours long, consisting of 280 questions divided into seven blocks. And this exam would cost you like $965 plus 150 for the shipping. And you can take this exam in your own country. Now the step 2 CK, so CK means clinical knowledge, so this exam is going to test your clinical knowledge and this exam is taken before your finals, right, final exam and the subjects will be tested in this examinations are over here. So this examination can also be taken in your own country and the cost would be the same, that is $965 plus 150 for the shipping and this exam consists of 320 questions divided into 8 blocks, it should be completed within 9 hours. Now step 2 CS. So this exam, unlike the above two, should be taken in the United States. So, so in this examination, uh, there are 12 stations, each consisting of a dummy patient whom you need to examine and make notes of. And this examination would cost you about uh, $1,505. And after this examination, you apply for ECFMG certification. So this is to verify that you have completed your step one and step two exam successfully. And this uh, certificate would cost you about $145. So with these, with these course, you apply to many different colleges and universities uh, to get you in, right? And now after that, you go for a step three examination. So once you get into a residency program, you take the step three examination. So the step three examination is a two day long exam. The first seven hour long consisting of, I guess, 230 questions. And the next day exam consisting of 180 MCQs and 13 computer based clinical simulations. And the total cost for this examination would be $1,600. Uh, so I have done some of the math. So after 39 hours, 1035 questions and five one and five thousand four hundred and eighty dollars excluding the cost for resources travel lodging fooding you have completed your usml journey <laughs> yeah that's too much right and what a lot of people uh, also do while they take their uh, C cs examination is that 
they go for USCE, that means United States Clinical Experience. So in order for you to get into good medical schools, um, the schools require you to have some sort of clinical experience in America. And there are a lot of different types of projects uh, or programs that have been designed for it. For example, electives, externships, and observerships. Electives should be taken while you are a medical student, and this is just like doing internship but in America. Externship and observerships are uh, taken once you have graduated. They have no school credit and uh, and they are of comparatively lesser value. So externship is just like electives without um, school credit. In observerships, you cannot uh, examine the patient. You can only see the patient and yeah, so that's of the least value. So the main objective of USCE is also for you to get a letter uh, to get letters of recommendation. Uh, so you need letter of recommendation in order to build a good CV. So what does a good CV mean? So for a good CV, you need three to four letters of recommendation from the professors or faculties or doctors working in the United States. And you need some research papers published and some volunteering work. And that would make a very good CV. So USMLE is going to be the biggest camel in your medical journey. And why do I say so? So let me explain this with an example. Um, the passing score for USMLE step 1 is 194, right? And you need a better score than the Americans to secure your seat over there. So at least you need to score 250 to 260, right? So once, uh, so you thought you were well prepared and you sat for the examinations and when you got your results, you see only 210. So now like you are stuck with this score 210 for seven years. You cannot retake the exam again for seven years. And that also means that the validity of step one is seven years. And yeah, suppose uh, you had a very good score and then you applied in many different colleges and you got some uh, acceptance and you got called for the interview but un uh, unluckily you got um, you didn't get selected in the interview now what now you have to wait for another year or return back to your country yeah so it's a lot of money time and energy on stake so the biggest buzz right now in the medical community is that the change in the scoring system from 2022 so this uh so earlier we had a scoring system zero to three hundred where the full marks of step one is not disclosed but it's believed to be three hundred so, so the step one examination was a primary uh, factor that helped IMGs that means international medical graduates to grad uh, to stand out from the Americans and now this and this scoring system is just thrown right so this means that uh, C, uh, CK examinations and your CV will have a more uh, in, more bigger importance mm -hmm. so yeah this is it for my this video so if you have any more questions please write it in the comment box and please if you like this video please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel thank you